Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today, I'm gonna to be continuing my Photoshop tutorial series. In the first one, we covered some really basic things like just creating a new project and kind of going over the panel system. And that was about the extent of it because I, I didn't wanna jump into things too quickly as I know that this is a little bit of an overwhelming program and people like to go really, really fast through it. And I feel like that is just uh, really disorienting and not the best way to teach this complicated program. So. That was the first lesson. If you want to check out that lesson, I'll throw it in the links below. Otherwise, today we're gonna to be going over opening up an image, then adding some little adjustments to it, and then exporting the image. So nothing really in depth, nothing too difficult, but something that'll teach you a couple of the tools of Photoshop and slowly start expanding our knowledge base. So let's get started with it. First off, we're just gonna go up into File, and then open. So once you open up Photoshop, it'll have something that looks like this. Like last time we created a new project, but we wanna open up a photo. So we don't want to create a project around the photo or like try to guess its dimensions. We want it to do all that work for us. So we're gonna go up to the top left. We're gonna file, open, and then I'm gonna navigate to on my hard drive to a place where um, I have some photos stored. And then I'm just going to choose a photo that I want to open. So let's go with this photo right here of the Nagasaki Peace statue. So we have this photo right here and you see it opened it up and this is the entirety of the sort of project right here. The um, canvas size is set to the image size so that there's no white space. When we export this, it's gonna be whatever is right here in front of us. And you'll also notice that it actually opened up the image as a background layer. And basically what this is, is it just names it background, it locks it, and then it adds a couple of properties that we won't get into, they're not very important. Um, and all you have to do to change it into a layer is just unlock it right here and now you can see that it has become a layer which means I can actually drag this or my bad it's the last one alive so I can't take it out but um, if it means if I add something else to this I can actually delete it later so what we want to actually go over is the adjustments um, tab right here so you'll see that we have this image right here and a lot of times we don't want to do really advanced things to the photo we just want to touch it up a little bit and you can do that really simply in Photoshop now with the advancements or the adjustments tab right here. So if I click on it and then I go up here to adjustments, we're going to be presented with all of these um, options. If you don't have the adjustments tab open, it's missing or something like that, you can go up here to window, adjustments, and you'll see if I uncheck it, it disappears. If I recheck it, it reappears. So yeah, just make sure it's checked and you should be able to see it. And now when you're up here, you're going to have a bunch of these little buttons and they're just really common things that you might want to do to an image. So for example, right here we have brightness and contrast. We have levels. Levels are um, particular adjustments on certain areas. So the highlights, the midtones, stuff like that. Curves is that in a graph form. So you can actually drag this graph around. Exposure, vibrance, and then a whole bunch of others. So let's just kind of go through each one and just make some adjustments to this. So the first thing I like to do with my images because I like to shoot flat, which means reduce the color um, and then sort of push everything together so that I can move it how I want to later on, is I can click this little brightness and contrast button right here and you'll see that it adds something on top of the layer. So now this element is attached to the layer, which means that all adjustments here are gonna be cascaded downward. So when we add another adjustment, it's going to, let me just, make it a little example right here. So now I have a levels one. So that means all levels are gonna be activated and then it's gonna apply a brightness and contrast and then it's gonna apply the image, which means that the order of these matters. So if I apply a levels and a certain brightness and contrast, if I switch them around, then the brightness and contrast comes first and then the levels react off of the brightness and contrast. So understand that the, the way you do this actually does matter and you can just drag these on top of each other later on to look at it. So let's make a couple adjustments and I'll kind of show what I'm going, I'm talking about here. So we're gonna go into the brightness and contrast and let's bump up that contrast just a little bit. So you don't wanna go extreme on any of these values. Like if we go left, it gets really, really sort of flat. We go right, it gets sort of blown out in both the darks and the lights. What we wanna do is just add a little bit of dispersion through this. So to do that, we're just going to drag it up just a little bit and you'll see that it's a minute change but it looks just a little bit better. And really touching up a photo is just a combination of a bunch of things to make it look better. So we're also going to kind of adjust this around, move it around to where we feel it looks kind of nice. And I think really close to zero, maybe just a tiny bit of brightness is good. And now if we go into the levels, you'll see that we have this sort of interface right here. 
so when I switch to the levels, I just clicked on it, you'll see that it switches this panel up here, which is the properties panel. Um, again, if you don't see this, go up to window and find properties, you can open it up right there. And it's just giving the properties of the adjustment that we added. So there's some defaults here, but we're not gonna go over those. What we're gonna look at is just this histogram right here and then the drop downs. So most photos, actually all photos, are taken in an RGB format, which means red, green, blue because that's how they're displayed on um, a monitor, is that the red pixels, the blue pixels, and the green pixels all light up in different values to create the color. For example, if you take a red and a blue and you combine those lights, you get purple. However, if you back off the blue a little bit, it starts to head into the red direction. If you black off the red a little bit, it starts to head in the blue direction. If you add green into that, you can get the whole color spectrum. So what we can do is we can adjust the entire color spectrum in a whole, or we can adjust red, green, or blue. So if I went to the reds here, if I said there, or let's go in the blues, because that'll be really, there's a lot of blue in this. And you see that our highlights are really strong and our low lights are really strong, which means we have a lot of shadow blue, which is probably these suits right here, um, and this right here as well. And we all have a lot of highlight blues, the statue as well as the sky. And we can actually adjust this a little bit. So you see when I take off the end right here, what I'm doing is I'm saying that the lowest value of blue has to go past this point, which means all the blues are now bumped up into a different direction. Their, their, their blues are all reduced. And I can do this exact same thing over here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm condensing the range of blues a little bit so that we don't have such an extreme, I guess, blue tone to the, the footage. But you can sort of get really creative in this. I don't wanna you know, go too in depth in this, but you can get creative and you can mess around with the specific colors here. Now let's see if there's enough change here. There isn't exactly a lot of change um, if we drag these on top of each other. So I will add some more adjustments and we'll see that sort of what I was talking about earlier where the, the order matters here. Let's go into Vibrance right here. And what Vibrance does is it adds color to the scene. It makes the, um, the colors more distinct. So it makes the blues more blue, the greens more green, the dark greens more dark green, you know, like that. So we can actually just add a little bit of vibrance. And like I said, I shoot flat so I can add a little bit more. Uh, if yours is shooting edited, which basically means that you're taking the picture and the camera's trying to create an image that could be a final product, then you might not be able to add as much. Because if you go too far, you blow out the colors and you start getting some weird, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's almost like pixely. The colors are really punched and the lines get sort of really rough and it just doesn't look the best. So we can just add a little bit of vibrance. So you see that we're here, um, adding it just a little color to the scene. And then saturation, um, this one adds more color as well. So yeah, right about there. And then, yeah, okay. So then that is basically like, you know, a couple of adjustments that we could add. Next thing we can do is let's go here. You can hit the black and white button and we can actually make it a black and white image. And what's interesting is this, um, I'm not actually gonna do this, but watch, this is what I was talking about. So if I move it down to here, you see that everything changes. If I move the black and white beneath vibrance, everything changes again. And if I move it beneath brightness and contrast, everything changes once again. And this is due to when the black and white is applied. So are these three effects being added and then it's being black and white? Or we can inverse that and is black and white being added and then all these three are adjusting black and white. And you see that it actually has sort of a bluish tint because of the levels we put, but if we drag it through here, then um, the it goes into a greenish tint because now we've reduced the blues before we've actually gotten to the black and white. And you know, if this is a little bit complicated, what I'm just trying to you know, sort of go over here is that order matters and that the layers tab is kind of trying to tell you how your effects are interacting with one another. But let's say this is kind of the final product we wanted. It actually came out looking like a cool sepia tone. And you know, you can go up here and you can explore all of these and you can explore them individually um, over time. You'll start to learn them. You'll start to learn which ones you use the most. And you can look up any of these online. You can look up how to use brightness slash contrast on Photoshop and Google and it'll show you, a, you know, there'll be some article about it, any of this stuff. So you can kind of go over that and learn on your own and just throw these onto an image and just kind of have fun with it. See what you can create of it. Delete it all, start over, delete it all, start over. Um, so yeah, let's say this was the final image that we wanted now. So now that we've opened this image, we've added some effects to it, we're liking what it's doing. So now what we can do is we can go up here to File, and then Export, and then Export As. We can click this button right here, 
and it's going to bring up this little window right here. And so this is how you're going to actually export the image. Now you might be thinking, why don't I just save the image? If you click File, Save As or something like that, you'll see that it tries to save it as a, um, a PSD file. Now you can save it as like a JPEG file or, so if I try to resave it in here as a JPEG, edited, it's sort of a workaround way to get to what I was just about to do. You'll see that it comes up with a little JPEG option right here, and we kind of kind of uh, bypass the export. But I like the export feature because it kind of gives us a lot of options in a small space. So you can use the save feature and then just change that drop down menu to whatever you want, or you can go to export, export as, and it'll open up this little window. And you'll see that what I just had is it's exporting as a JPEG, and that little window came up and it sort of showed um, exactly what we're going to be doing in here in a smaller version, a little quicker version, but a little bit less controlled version. Right up here, we can choose what we want to save it as. So we can save it as a PNG, we can save it as a JPEG, or a GIF, or an SVG file. If we go to JPEG right here, um, you can notice also notice that the megabytes are changing, so you can notice you know how how big this file is going to be. A lot of times, you probably don't want to export in over 4K, which is this is because I believe 4K is 3800 by 20. Seven, or maybe that's 2.7k. Anyway, this is a really big file and you probably don't want to export in that. So you can actually um, go here and type in something like 1980 by 1020, but these are locked at the current moment. So this is the best sort of version to get it um, with the same dimensions. So understand that these are going to be locked and it's not going to really um, allow you to change the image size within here but you can change it, and well, that's actually nice because that means it's not going to crop it for you. So if I go like 1980, this is the closest to um, 1080p that you're gonna get. I guess if uh, since it's 1080p, we should actually go with height here, so we can go 1080. And this is kind of the closest that you're gonna get to the aspect ratio, but it isn't gonna be there because of how the image is taken. If you do wanna crop it, we can quickly go over that right here. You can go up to image, you can go to canvas size, and then now you can switch this to pixels. We can go um, 1980 by 1020, or my bad, 1920 by 1080, like so. And it's going to ask, it's going to warn you that some clipping will occur, which it's going to definitely occur. You can click on the file, hit Control T, and it's going to bring up the Transform tab, and you can actually drag it smaller, and then clipping will definitely occur. So when you click. What you want to do is you want to click on an edge, hold shift, drag it, and this is going to make sure that it is not stretching it at all. Then once you have something uh, the size you want, then you want to release your click and then release your shift. And now we kind of have this in a version that works for us. Now we can go back into file, export, export as, and then now we have the 1920 by 1080p. It's in a, um, a format that is only 1.2 megabytes instead of 6.8, which is if you're uploading online, you might want to do. Um, you can lower the quality even lower. So a lot of times online needs something that's like only 25% quality. So you can see that we can bring this file all the way down to 159. And I believe it came in at 22 megabytes um, just because that's how the camera took it. So we've taken the file, we've added some adjustments, we've cropped it down, and now we're exporting it for online or something like that. So we can just go here, click export all. Choose a location where you want to export this. It's, I don't want to overwrite this old one, so I'm going to name this something like edited or something like that. I'm going to click save. And then just like that, we have created our image. That is it on this tutorial. Um, just a really quick introduction on some of the effects. You know, Get something working in Photoshop and learn a couple of the tools. We'll keep going more and more advanced as the tutorials continue. But I, again, I want to kind of open this up slowly so we can kind of get used to some things. Anyway, thanks everyone for joining me. If you like this tutorial and want to see more Adobe related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I release a video every other day. And uh, if you got any questions or comments or any suggestions for future tutorials, those are in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, see ya.